Vampire and disease have been intertwined since the dawn of time. It's inevitable the blood-drinking parasite spreads sickness with her bite, weakens her victim before the advent of illness, and in a very real way is a disease upon the heaving throng of humanity. Minor cults of kindred who embrace this ruinous connection have emerged throughout history, but the tumultuous modern nights see many more such plague bringers springing up than ever before. The most base and simplistic of these cults embrace disease as the most literal level, believing that vampires are the harbingers of plague upon humanity, and that they must spread sickness to usher in, or finish off, Gehenna itself. More sophisticated groups, like the Third Day, develop elaborate nuances or justifications, connecting disease upon the kind with the beckoning that now seizes elders, or hoping to afflict kindred themselves through corrupting the herd upon which they feed. Whatever the reasoning, the outcome is usually the same heaps of putrefying bodies, vampires retching up tainted vitae, and swarms of flies. It's no wonder that most sect-aligned kindred try to stamp out these blisters as soon as possible. Greetings, Kindred. I am Voivode Maquette, and welcome back to Our World of Darkness and another episode of Metaplot Monday. Tonight, we're going to be going over another lore sheet in the Forbidden Religions book, specifically the Plagues of Gehenna. This is such an interesting lore sheet that ties into the Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines cult, the Ninth Circle, the Brotherhood of the Ninth Circle. It is dark and disgusting. It touches on some of the more base connections between vampires and human ruin that you're going to find in the world of darkness, and that is disease. That is parasites. That is what vampires are. They're feeding off of humans. We're not exactly symbiotic. We're not feeding off humans to create a better life for them. We're feeding off humans to create a better life for ourselves. Vampires are probably the most sophisticated parasite that you're going to find in the world. Now, with this lore sheet comes some interesting give and takes. But I do just want to quote the Netflix Dracula show, where there is flesh, there's flies. Investing one trait into this lore sheet gets you blister marks. You're a member of a new, loose association of kindred keeping vigil for any signs of blisters. These kindred who willingly or ignorantly spread disease among the kind. Whenever you succeed in a medicine role to examine the health of a mortal, living or post-mortem, you also discern whether any disease they may have was inflicted on them by a kindred. So with blister marks, when you're observing a human, when you're investigating into a situation where humans are becoming sick, whether or not the subject is alive or dead, you can actually tell whether or not this is vampiric derived. You can, you can tell if you're dealing with what was known as plague bearers in the bloodlines. That can be interesting if you're associating specific diseases with things like anemia that don't typically come with anemia, where the people seem to be more pallid, drained of life, less blood, those kind of things. Your storyteller is going to be the prime uh, source of information of how this blood is being affected, but humans typically need time to recover after feeding. So perhaps this disease is actually stopping their bone marrow from creating more blood. Investing two traits gets you autoclave. Fearful of becoming a disease vector, you have three dots in herd that will remain clean and uninfected even 
should sickness run rampant through the local population. However, you must maintain the purity of this blood source and shepherd it carefully, which means that no one can draw upon the herd more than once per story. If you share it with anyone, even once, you lose access to it yourself for the remainder of the story. So this one seems that you have a quarantined group of individuals to feed from. You have people who you know for sure are not going to be anywhere near any possibility of blood of plague bearers. That is a rare security if you are going to be dealing with a storyline that has plague bearers in mind. It's, it's definitely a story that should come up more often, I think, in Vampire the Masquerade games due to the fact that we are dealing with blood transfers in a base way. We are dealing with the idea of draining blood and doing that repeatedly to multiple people. Storytellers really do need to keep track of who their players are feeding from and if whether or not they could be sick. A simple dice roll to see if they're unlucky enough to find out if they did contract some kind of disease could be the beginning of a complete plotline in and of itself. Investing three traits into this lore sheet gets you fire in the blood. Strange diseases infected you once, bringing a delirium that racked even your kindred physiology with fever and filled your waking hours with bizarre phantasmagoria. While the sickness passed, it has left a mark upon you. Once per scene, when you feed on a mortal and contract a disease that you could then spread on to future victims, you mend one superficial health damage and one superficial willpower damage. You also immediately become aware whenever the blood of a vessel you feed from bears infectious disease. This one's actually interesting because it it suggests that vampires gain a type of immunity like humans do when they catch a disease, where the same thing truthfully can't really affect them more than once in most cases. When you feed from a diseased victim, you heal a superficial wound, both willpower and physical, automatically. And you can tell that there's something in the blood that's not quite right. This could very well be a life-saving lore sheet given specific situations. Investing four traits into this lore sheet gets you fire break. You've studied disease outbreaks in mortals and vampires alike and understand how far an infection can slither through kindred society before being detected. You possess five dots and influence solely for the purpose of controlling and quelling disease outbreaks among the kind that would affect the kindred. When you exercise this influence and succeed, you gain two dots in status with your set for the remainder of the story. So you have the ability to create quarantines and to institute vaccines and things like that. You have the ability, using your influence, to shape and stop minor outbreaks as they are coming if you notice them. That can be very, very useful, and I can see where certain clans, such as the Malkadians, the Tremere, uh, anybody who really is involved in the health situations, the Giovanni, the Hikata, could very well use this to their advantage. And the fact that you get temporary status at least, shows that the kindred in the city are at least appreciative of the kind of things that you are capable of doing. But that appreciation doesn't last as long as you think it would. Investing five traits into this lore sheet gets you plague sample. In your possession is a vial of blood drawn from a sick, maddened elder while in the throes of the beckoning. It seethes with the contagious power of a plague that will affect kindred with lethal results. What exactly it does to vampire victims, how it spreads, and what link it has to the beckoning is up to the storyteller. If you are ever desperate, brave, or mad enough to unleash the disease upon 
your fellow undead. Plague Sample takes this lore sheet and goes from you're a helpful member of society to being you have the potential of being one of the most dangerous members of Kindred Society. It kind of reminds me of the movie 12 Monkeys with Bruce Willis where they're trying to figure out where exactly the disease came from, how it started, how it began to spread. You could be that catalyst in this game if you so chose to be. This level of this lore sheet really does just make you the antagonist of the game. But whether or not anybody is able to find out that you did it, that depends on how intelligent you are when it comes to the spread. So this lore sheet has everything to do with the idea of the plagues in the blood. And the fact that these things are not met more commonly in Vampire the Masquerade is kind of strange due to the fact that we are dealing with creatures who live their lives by drinking blood, by spreading plague. It doesn't make any sense, the fact that this is a plot line that primarily is ignored out there. I'm very interested... This lore sheet's nice and all, and I do think that it does come in handy for a lot of people, both storytellers and players alike. But I'm, I'm very interested in asking players and storytellers out there right now if Blood Plague or Sickness has ever been a primary storyline in your game. How you did it, what you did with it. And then maybe we can possibly uh, try to figure out how that fits in Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition lore. I am Voivode Maquette, and this is Our World of Darkness, and thank you for joining me in this Metaplot Monday for the reading of Plagues of Gehenna. Good evening.